we are going to have to have you back on again because you just dropped so much gold in this what seemed like five minutes, although it's been 46. Um, so we're definitely going to have to have you back on for round two. What's up, friends? Welcome to the RE Junkies podcast, where we supply your regular fix of all things real estate. Make sure you're the first to get your dose of the RE Junkies podcast by subscribing to this show on your favorite podcasting platform or YouTube. I'm your host, Brooks O'Hearn, joined by my co-host, Kate Murphy, and today we are so excited to welcome our friend, Kathy Burns. Hey! I am so excited you are here, Kathy. I obviously know your story, and Brooks does too for the most part, but um, I just think you have such a, a unique story and also at the same time, a very relatable story. You started real estate at 55 after doing financial planning for 23 years. You had just moved from Michigan, dead broke in a new state, and you didn't know anyone but your daughter. Um, and not only is that unique, but your energy and your passion for life is unreal. So before we jump into everything, I want you to unpack your story a little bit. Tell us a little bit about how you got into real estate and kind of how all this came to be. Sure. So, uh, at 55, I, that's how old I was, uh, starting over and, uh, that's quite a, a challenge, but you know what? I was really excited to start over. Uh, I, I'd left Michigan. I didn't know anybody in New, in uh, North Carolina. And you know what? You feel invisible. It's kind of good because no one's got your old chapters. I, I like that a lot. So um, for the first six months, I wasn't in real estate. I, I had done financial planning. I got my insurance license here and I thought, well, I guess I'll do, I'll get my insurance license and just kind of do that. Well, that turned it out being a crazy um, adventure, which I ended up shutting down that company in seven states because they were just really vile to senior citizens in North Carolina. And my daughter, who was really supporting me during that time since I was so broke, and a brand new mortgage lender on commission, and I had she kicked out her roommate so that I could live with her. So she's like, come on, girl, get out there and make some money. I go, sure, sure, sure. So I thought, um, what will I do? And my family was in real estate. My father was a builder. My mom was um, a real estate agent. And I said, oh, okay, I'll go get my real estate license. I didn't really want to do it. But I thought, you know what? It'll blend well with this industry. So I got my license and I went to Cobo Banker because I liked the color of their logo and they said they wanted me. <laughs> <laughs> and so I said, great. And so that was 2006, actually. And so um, the funny part about that was, uh, you know, I, I'm a I'm a networking or I'm, I'm a networker naturally. And I'm also really passionate about tech. And I'm in there teaching them all about tech and stuff and nobody's sharing with me. I really didn't like that. So I didn't stay at Coldwell too long. I moved over to Remax where I ended up forming a partnership for seven years, which was great. And um, I just figured it out. That was really my agenda. I was going to figure it out. I was going to... I knew in financial planning that you needed to focus in on an agenda. So I... I I was from Michigan. I live by the water. I wanted to live on the water here. I didn't want uh, a low price point because I figured out the net commission really quickly. That wasn't going to work for me. So I focused in on that my agenda would be I'm going to live on the water. I'll rent a little cottage. I'll figure out how to do it even though I have no rent money. And um, so I started selling stuff on eBay to support myself that I had had from my previous wealthier life. And um and anyway, I started to figure it out and I, I, I wanted to be a waterfront specialist. So I was targeting in on a niche. I was targeting in on a price point that I could see would move easier because that was 2006 where the market was taken off, but it quickly crashed. <laughs> um, so just as I was ramping up. <laughs> that puppy just rolled over on me, but I really learned and that was the agenda to niche in and to uh, have a target market of what I would specialize in, knowing that I would do other things, but that was going to be my focus. And I did a lot of things to just stay on that target. Well, I want to highlight the importance. I mean, the fact that you figured out so early on that you needed to target in on a niche is awesome because I think that that, you know, shiny object syndrome is very real in real estate and you, you want to be everyone's everything. And right. you just, you don't get any traction with that. So when you do narrow in on something like that, um, especially so early on in your career, I mean, that 
probably was one of the best moves that you made starting out. Absolutely. And I teach a lot of agents that I, I see them all running all over the state. I said, hey, you got expenses with your car, your gas. How about your time? No, don't do that. Niche in. And you can set up the MLS to target in what shows up on your everyday. I forget what it's called, um, but you can niche it in. I did that immediately and I set up searches for myself. There were all the waterfronts in the price point that I was after. So I would learn that target market. Quick. I created spreadsheets. I was on a mission. <laughs> she was on a mission. You're always on a mission, Kathy. <laughs> You're always I, on a mission. Like, like that's the those are the two biggest things for new agents. Is yes. like the 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 one big thing is okay, well, I could get my real estate license, but then I don't know anybody. And right. especially like like you literally didn't know anybody. You yeah. you had your daughter. And and then and then everybody says, Well, where should I start? Mm -hmm. Right. And like you just laid it out. So I mean, we're five minutes in and you just laid out how to start your real estate business like that. <laughs> I mean, it, like, don't complicate it. That's amazing. No. Well, and I think it's very important to figure out what your niche might be. What, what, like, I like the water. I'm going to be by the water. I'm going to learn that one. And the price point was yes. higher too. My price point was four to nine. So, I, uh, you know, there's a lot of new agents. They'll just take everything. They're so hungry. I said, stop being hungry. I said, I, I know hungry, literally. In that, in that time that I was working there, living on uh, Raisin Bran and Potatoes, but that's another story. Um, <laughs> I, I knew you can't be hungry with your client. you got to be sharp with your client. If you're coming off like, I got to make this sale, nobody wants to work with you. You've got to be confident in yourself, and that means studying that niche. I think right now, it, for a lot of people that are older, maybe not on, on what's going to listen to this, but... Um, the 55 plus communities and specialize in that holy cow if that's your age group and you target in on that that's a that's a first of all they have money they got money people <laughs> i want to work with the ones that have the money <laughs> <laughs> makes life a little easier like, that's, a, that's a pretty good mantra <laughs> well yeah and i think that's the other important thing too and i'm glad that you said that kathy is find your niche around what you enjoy and who you relate yes. to, because not only does it make life a lot easier, it makes, it makes your career a lot more fun too. Like right. mine has been first time home buyers because that's my age group. Those are my friends. Those are the people that I surround myself with. So it comes a lot naturally, a lot more naturally, the same way that I'm sure the waterfront properties and, and your clients have for you as well. Right. Yes, absolutely. That's find perfect. what makes you happy. Do what makes you happy. And that, and it, it's less of a chance that you're going to burn out too, which, right. you know, in real estate, sometimes it can feel like it's a constant cycle of burnout. So, oh yeah. Yeah. I love that you shared that. Thank you for sharing that gold already. We're seven minutes in. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, Kathy is fantastic and so much fun to follow on social media. She mentioned loving tech. Um, she's awesome at it. And you'll always see her popping on with lives and videos and pictures kind of keeping you up to date. So um, check out the show notes to connect with her on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Um, and just keep up with, with all things cat, with all things, Kathy, I think that needs to be a you. reality show. <laughs> um, okay. Does. So you HGTV? <laughs> literally, um, okay. So you've gotten to North Carolina, you've kind of narrowed in on your niche. Um, we kind of talked before the show started that your pit or your, you know, the bottom for you kind of was the beginning of your journey, but I imagine there's kind of been some ups and downs as you've gone along this journey as well. So tell us a story about when you kind of felt like you hit the pit of your real estate career, uh, that low point that you thought you might not come back from. Sure. Well, when the market turned, um, I was just getting on a roll, you know, and at that time I was working for Remax. I moved over to there because uh, I'd heard that those were where all the power players were. And I wanted to learn from the power players. And I, I, I had also just moved out from uh, my daughter's house. So now I am on my own. And my deal that I thought that was going to get me launched was a $700,000 piece of property and it fell apart. So now I signed a lease on a waterfront cottage and had no money. I was freaking out, man. So one cool thing about Remax though, was they focused in on the short sales. So I said, you know what? I'm diving into that. I'm going to figure this out. And I dove into that right away. And I also partnered with another agent at that time. Um, and, and that was really good. She had the same work ethic as me, very different style than me. And we did a lot of expireds at that time. 
and you may see expired start to happen as this market changes. And so uh, we created a system. I created the system where we worked that waterfront niche. And uh, there was Brawley School Road, which is in our area, was pretty much all water, but it had a lot of houses on it, right? It was nine miles long. Um, and so we worked that peninsula of all these little fingers of waterfront properties. I printed out all the addresses. I went into Realist and figured out because it wasn't a simple, like just pull the waterfront. You had to do it one by one by one. Like, oh my God, but I did it. And so now I got my <laughs> marketing list, right? And so um, I worked um, that for the expireds with Patty. I had a whole sheet that we'd fill out. I, I saw who the previous realtor was, I looked them up in Realist so that I could know what kind of equity they had in it. Were they a short sale problem or did they have some money and they could work with me? I needed to know they could play because if they couldn't play, then they went to a different bucket and there was faster money in the ones who could play. So that was my focus. And so I created this sheet. I knew the previous agent. I knew how long it had been on the market. I knew how much equity was in there. I saw what they priced it at. I looked at their pictures. I made notes on there so that I knew when I walked up to their house, a lot about them. And so every Saturday, Patty and I would get to the office. That was my partner at 830. We would go through uh, that day's expires. And back then they had tons of them. And so I would look just down this road because there were plenty just down this road. And we would create the order of them going up the road and coming down. And so we started to do that. Um, and when we became partners, Patty was bold to walk up to the door, but she had nothing to say when she got there. I was not bold to walk to the door, but man, I was talking it once I got there. <laughs> <laughs> and we had a clipboard that had the realtor logo on the other side, so they didn't think we were something else coming up to the door. But the best part was, the most exciting day was when Patty, I'm a car girl, just so you know, when Patty pulls in, in a fully restored 65 vet with side pipes roaring away, and we are Ray City here. I'm like, Patty, that's the holy grail of marketing. We're taking that car on Saturday mornings. And we did. And so we'd been doing this and getting listings and actually having our best year ever in a very tough market but because we were calling on those expireds with a mission and with a purpose and I also use send out cards as follow-up cards when I would go to every one of those things I would do the uh, on the app right on my phone as I would leave there but that car got us our first million eight listing because they came running out the door and that's what they would do <laughs> car people love cars <laughs> and we made we actually had our best years in some of the toughest years wow that's yeah, really, that. really cool. And um, we we should circle back on send out cards because that's the other thing you're queen of. Um, your follow-up game is unreal. And the, the way that you do it's really cool. So we'll, we'll stick a pin in that and go back to that because okay. that's big. Um, that's crazy. Ask, yeah, go ahead, Brooks. I want to ask real quick, just overgeneralize this a little bit, but the the – you, you talked about, you know, you targeted the targeted the expireds that had um, some equity, you know, had some some wiggle room, and then the short sales would go in a different bucket. So just for the agents out there listening and, and maybe want to target expireds, this is an overgeneralization, but is it is it more so you won a lot of those expired listings because of uh, a new price? or because of your marketing, or just simply because you were solving whatever problem they had at that time point with their previous agent? Well, we were unique. Nobody was knocking on doors. I think in COVID, that's a little tricky right now because people are a little cautious of that. People, We had many people inside the house. You could see they were in there and they weren't coming. The car changed everything. And, and I could tell that that was a deal. But but what we were is different. We, we were prepared. When we knocked on the door, we just said, hey, we saw that you had your house on the market before and it's come off. Are you planning on putting it back on the market? If you are, love to talk to you, make an appointment. My, my whole agenda was to get an appointment or contact information because I was going to follow up with them. And so because we did that and we were unique, whereas a lot of people would take the shortcut road and just mail, 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 spend a fortune. No, stop that. That's a waste of money. And everybody does that stuff. Be different. Be different. Does that help? I love it. I love <laughs> it. That's perfect. Thank you. 
Kathy, you also kind of started real estate at an interesting time. Um, Not that this market that we're going through is exactly the same, but there's certainly a shift going on. So what do you think, what are you taking learning lessons from that shift into this one um, and going forward? Well, I think, you know, because I did investments um, for 23 years, I saw the market also shift. You have to be flexible enough and start paying attention um, to worry. Don't listen to the friggin' news media. That's another whole story. Um, <laughs> but listen to valid sources. You know, listen to valid sources. I think things like this on here are, are really valid because, you know, the market isn't crashing. The market is changing. It's normalizing. I mean, it was crazy before. Now we're normalizing. And people got really spoiled in that little time frame. But but it, they weren't just spoiled. We had a lot of fear in that time. You, your buyer's agents are running all over, showing 50 houses, losing 10 deals, and, and exasperated, right? Now they can at least yeah. show some houses and got a shot at it, you know? So I think... For me, I'm, I'm a big believer in listings, list to last. I heard that at Colo Banker when I first started with them. And it's really true. You get your weekends back too. Um, but you have to do buyers as well, no matter what. Even your listings that you sell, they want to buy something else. So you've got to be good at both. And I think that I love Remind which is in our MLS and in, I think in almost every MLS and it's a free resource in like ours now. And I'll bet it is in most. One of the cool features that it has is you can search a territory um, of homes that you pick and you can say to it as a filter, I want the most likely to sell and medium likely to sell. Now you narrow it down. So now you create a list that you can export and you can start to work. And I was just talking about this with an agent yesterday. She's very frustrated. She's been a a really successful agent. And yet all of a sudden her market's drying up. And I said, tell me what you're doing. She goes, I'm mailing, mailing, mailing. Mm, Stop it. You're going to, you can't keep up with how many times you'd have to do it. It's too expensive. Be more proactive, figure out your niche, start calling those people. If you're going to send something specialized, like uh, a CRM of that particular house, which I think is a good deal, especially if it's marketed, man, that's probably once every two weeks or faster. And I'd be trying to call. I'd be doing, and I wouldn't just do a CRM. I'd be switching it up. I'd be doing something that's unique. Here's what's happening in the market. I'm your go-to person. I'd I'd stalk them probably like crazy because they're going to know me. They're going to want to know me. I'm going to make them feel good about me. There's going to be fun stuff. I think that's how you do it. And, And I... I don't think I'd knock on doors in COVID because I think people are still, there's, there's mixed, people are mixed about that. Me, knock on my door. I'm fine. <laughs> Come on. That's fine. Come on. I'll well, send I'm, my definitely, little... I'm definitely noticing a trend of uniqueness here. And, um, you know, like I said, one of the cool things that you do, and this made me think of it when you just said it, is you send out, I got a guy post. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. That's the coolest thing ever. And I, so send out cards is a network marketing company. I don't make any money at it. I have no care if you signed up under anybody. It's irrelevant to me. That's not my agenda. I stay focused on my tasks. You get divided on too many tasks and you're, and I got enough ADD going on. So I have to stay focused. So, (laughs) so that I use send out cards as a tool and I used to use them with the expireds where I'd be standing right on the porch. I'd uh, take a picture of the front of the house so that that was the front of the card. So it was unique to that client and that prospect. I may or may not have gotten an appointment. If I got an appointment, I said, I'd look forward to seeing you on Tuesday, blah, blah, blah. And I would do that right from my phone. It was an app and it would mail it to them personally, U.S. mail. That's the big deal. And it's a nice card. Got them over here in my desk, but I should pop one up. Anyway, um, <laughs> So the I got a guy card, I decided to do, I, I joined BNI, which is a networking group that I highly recommend, really hard to get in for realtors because it's industry exclusive, only one realtor per group. And um, I've been in mine for 14 years. It's been powerful. So it dawned on me, why don't I promote one of the vendors in my group each month? And I, because I want them to think of me as Kathy's the go-to person. Go to Kathy. She knows everything. (laughs) That's my vision. And so I, I created this card on Canva that says, I got a guy and a gal too. And so you open it up on the inside left and I'm featuring whoever that vendor is, right? 
and it's got their logo on it. It's got whatever they want to say, all their contact information. And now I've recently added like a picture that's personalized. On the right hand side, it goes, hey, it's Kathy Burns. This is my monthly card. Um, just wanted to let you know I highly recommend Steve. He's a, a custom builder. Really think this guy's great. I don't get paid for anything other than the personal feel good that I get when, you know, you get a quality person to work with, right? I want them to know I'm not getting paid for this because that's a big agenda for me. You get a lot of people offering you money. No, be integrative in that piece. Don't take that money even if you need it because that's not the agenda. I want them to trust my sources. I, and I'm only putting people in there that I trust, right? And so then I, I have a little picture of me, my dogs now, I look like a crazy dog lady, but I don't care. And um, my, my contact information's there. And on the back, it's branded. So they can see uh, they've got all my information. Oh, and I also do say, you know, if, if, you, if this is not the guy you need, um, let me know what you need because I got a guy. Um, and if I don't have a guy, I got a guy who's got a guy. <laughs> I always say that. So um, it's just fun too. And so that card goes out to my top clients that I've worked with through the years that I continue to want to do business with. And because I don't want to do business with everybody I've worked with, if you know what I mean. And you got that right. <laughs> <laughs> and I also do it to my B&I group because they're my core vendors. And those vendors do change. I mean, they B&I groups flush through different people. And um, and I'm cherry picking who I want to feature. And it, it's been so good to me. I get a call from somebody saying, Kath, I know you got a guy. Tell me, you know, they call me all the time. So I stay top of mind all the time. And that costs me maybe $200 a month total. That's postage, the cards. And it's done in a nanosecond because I save those addresses. I just flip out the card with it. The, really, the only thing I'm changing is the inside a little bit. It'll take me maybe 15 minutes to do the card. I've got it in my calendar that I do this on the 23rd of every month. Boom, boom, boom. And it's wonderful. And, and they stand in line waiting to be the vendor next, which I love. <laughs> love that. That's amazing. I mean, email newsletters are cool, but like that, that's cool. And no one is doing that. Just doing it. I tell everybody too, but nobody does it. And that's great. I don't care if like all everybody on here did it. You're all touching different cir circles. You don't have to be afraid to share your gold. Share your gold. Givers gain. I love it. <laughs> That's perfect. Um, okay. So circling back, you kind of told us, so you hit your low point, the market was shifting, you were knocking on doors, um, you were getting a lot of expired listings. But let's fast forward to today. That's what is the primary of your business? I mean, who's coming to you? Is it referrals? I mean, where is your business at now? I don't go after any business whatsoever. I joined the LePage Johnson team a little over five years ago, and two weeks later, they went to EXP. And right prior to that, uh, about a year prior to that, my mother um, had dementia, and I needed to go pick her up in Georgia and bring her here. That was, a, that was another low point. That was a very challenging time in my career. And the day that I brought her back, my business partner said to me, I'm leaving our partnership. I'm going on my own. I'm like, what? <laughs> okay. So I was trying to figure a bunch of things out. And I also got fired from the firm that I was at because I questioned their integrity, even though I was the top producer. So I was really like, oh, all right. I got to figure out how to be a single agent. I've got my mother with a dog that was crazy. And I, I had to leave and find a new firm. And that's when I I called Craig LePage and Shelly Johnson, and I'd always admired them. And they said, just come over here at Keller and sit by us and kind of chill and figure it out. Don't have to join the team. Just come sit, which I did. And that um, that was great because I was able to kind of regroup, figure out what to do with my mom, how I was going to handle all that. And and I really got my bearings going. And then they they two weeks later, or I joined their team about eight months later. And then two weeks they went to EXP and I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. I, I got enough change. I, I trust you guys. I'm just going. And it was the biggest blessing that ever happened. That was a turning point in my career. And I do better business because it's not just me sharing. I, I, I've always been a giver and a sharer that I finally found a home where everybody shares. And that has changed my business. I've done just under 8 million in the past 30 days. I'm freaking excited about that. That's a 
Record you are breaker. A rock Hell star. yeah. <laughs> One of which Hell was yeah. a five million dollar property that uh oh it's a great story about that one if you have time. But anyway, um my business does better. It's incredibly better because of all the sharing and the gold that goes on. Much like this this whole podcast. This is brilliant to do this. I love this because agents are hungry for what to do and not the same old blah blah blah. Tell me some of your secrets. And that's what we do at EXP. I freaking love that. It's home for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's what well, we I wanted. Ask, Go ahead. I, I want to ask a quick question about um, some some teams and, and your perspective on things. And then, and then I would love to dive into that $5 million property story. Um, so the question is, the you, you've been with Caldwell Banker. You've been with Remax. You joined Keller Williams, although for a short time. And then obviously you made the switch to EXP where you are now. Um, for, for someone out there who might be a new agent or is looking at potentially switching a team or a brokerage, like what are the things that you have looked at at different points in your career that have taken you to those different brokerages and different yeah, teams? That, that's, a, that's a great one. When I started, teams were not much of a thing. You, you didn't see them. Today, I think it's wonderful to be on a team for a new agent I, to me start on a team start on a team for me i, I i've been with five firms uh, the one that fired me was sell state the little rascals but that's okay uh, <laughs> yeah. every sucker punch is a gift if you look for it so all True. of that was good my partner leaving all those things it was good so each one i was looking for a different scenario i was always looking for a better bottom line i pay attention to my net not my gross that's probably my financial planning background so i'm always looking at how i'll be better at my net that's why i pay attention to the price point that's why i pay attention to the area that i'm willing to work my business so i think that's critical for a new agent today they need to get on a team where there's coaching and um, because I think coaching is critical. Um, one of my biggest regrets is that I did that I never hired a coach myself. I mean, I was I was just a scrapper in the whole thing, trying to figure it all out, which is fine because I am a scrapper, but I think it wastes time. So a new agent for me, I would I would even interview different teams because some teams are helpful and some are not. Um, our team is freaking amazing. I, I I stalked Craig LePage for years because of his marketing. And when I finally met him, I said, okay, I've been stalking you forever because <laughs> I really love what you do. And when they wanted me on their team, I'm like, really? <laughs> it was very exciting. So, and, and yes. I've had a lot of people say to me, you had your own team. Why would you be on a team at this stage of the game? That's confusing to a lot of people. Why aren't you an individual agent? Because it's hard. No, I don't want to be an individual agent. I want to be on somebody's team. I don't want to be a team leader anymore. I'm 72. I'm done with being in charge. They let me pretend that I'm in charge, which is a lot of fun. So, <laughs> But I don't have the responsibilities. So it's great. When, when you're on a team and they provide this and, yes, you pay less, so what? I'd be paying more if it was all by myself. So a new agent, get on a team. But interview the teams, make sure, check your splits. Don't get so lost in the splits. Look at it as a college education. See if there's a chance to improve the splits. Work at those splits. Dive into everything you can possibly do that they're offering. And, and But don't get lost in just the education. Get to work, buddy. Get to work. I love that. Now, and, and what about experienced agents? Making the switch in the middle of a career to a new team, anything, anything specific or new brokerage or anything specific you would, you would give them for uh, advice? Yes. Because there's a lot of agents that just say to us, well, I love my broker. I said, really? That's great. I love, I love people too. But what's your business working out at? You know, what's your net? Are, what are you getting for what you're paying? Is there something better? Is there, you know, with the XP, the, the residuals, freaking incredible. Um, so pay attention to your company. Pay attention to the company. Every franchise has a franchise fee. You know, you're paying that plus your, you know, split plus what are the costs internally that they're offering? And and a lot of people think it's oh, let's just go have my own boutique. Oh my God, you just took on a whole nightmare of stuff to do and responsibility. No, be smarter. Yeah, no shit. No way. <laughs> no way. So, you know, you can. They're all a lot the same <laughs> except EXP. I honestly clearly in love. <laughs> um, it's, it's a game changer. It's so, so, so different. It is. It is. 
I love that. Thank you for that candid advice for, for agents. Cause I see them all the time, you know, and they reach out to Kate and I and, and ask, um, uh, about potentially joining EXP or just for advice on, on how to pick a brokerage. And there are yes. so many things out there. Like, you know, I, I, I get asked all the time, people, people ask, they're like, well, how much, how much do you produce so I can make sure I trust you? And I'm like, you are asking the wrong damn question. Like if you're joining a team based on how much your team leader is producing, or you're joining a brokerage based on how much they're producing, you have, you've already lost you. Mm -hmm. That's the terrible worst question to ask, because really it's about like, what are they, what are they going to do for you? And, and yeah, you're right. Like, I, I, you can love a broker, you can love your mentor, you can love your team leader at whatever brokerage you're at. But at the end of the day, like you got to focus on you and the food on the table. Right. Like it's your net. Is is that ROI positive? Yeah. Like <laughs> Yeah. And what's your freedom like? You know, um, that's the biggest challenge in real estate today. You know, you're broke after every deal in a sense. No, thank you. I want, give me opportunities that are more than just the sale. And more and more companies are starting to look at that. So you really want to evaluate it. We're not the only one that offers different uh, streams. Um, But I think you really got to look at that. What's, what's, how does it look for you and your family? You know, for me, I want to slow down my production, if not completely. And let me just be a mentor and a trainer because I want residual income. I'm, I'm, my goal is 15,000 a month at a very minimum. I'm averaging around five. So that, that's a good number for me, but I really want to step it up because I want to get out there and drive that cool car I got. (laughs) Absolutely. I think that's important. And I know when I started real estate, it was the same people and the same type of person giving the advice on how to build your business. And I remember walking in and I was like, I don't want to build my business like this. I don't want to sit on the phone and cold call all day. I don't want to have to go. Yes. You know, for me. I don't, I don't want to door knock. I want to build my business on my terms for my goals. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I really respect that, that you did the same and you, you recognize that. And you, I think there's such a big misconception with teams yes. and people, once they hit solo agents, once they hit a certain point, of production, they're like, I would never be on a team. But what's crazy is I think that actually amplified your career. I mean, 8 million in 30 days. Are you kidding me? Right. It's so you got to look at the different that was four transactions. Wild. Yeah. And, and that's yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. And it probably takes so much stress off of you too, right? Yes, it does. <laughs> Hell Very yeah, good. it does. Yeah. 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 Well, let's, let's dive in. I want to, I want to hear about this, this $5 million listing. Okay. So yeah, this is a fun story. Woo. So back in 2010, I bought a group on to, from, for a, from a bead store on how to do, I know, I love this. This is where it started and how to have a, a necklace that I could design myself and some earrings. And it was $30. I said, okay, great. I'm going to buy the group on. And so I call up the lady cause there were classes. She, and she tells me a class. I said, Oh, none of those are going to work for me what are we going to do? And she goes, I'll do a private one for you. I said, great. So I go into her class, downtown Mooresville, and uh, I'm looking at all her beads. I'm all excited, having so much fun. And we're sitting and talking. Of course, if it's one-on-one, she's telling me her story. I'm telling her my story. She knows I'm an agent. I've only been doing it about four years. And um, she tells me where she lives. And at, uh, I said, oh, I know that house, which was a incredibly big, um, it looks like a castle. It's huge. And mm-hmm. I, I kept thinking, oh, I would love that listing. And I'm not saying that to her, but because she just bought it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she just bought it. And she was telling me how cool it was. And I'm salivating. And anyway, she goes, but I want to buy a house for my, my sister. I go, okay. And she says, and I'll pay cash. I go, okay. And so within a very short period of time, I get the house uh, sold for the sister. And my client paid for it. And then then she goes, you know, I'm going to buy a house for my son. I go, okay. So she buys a house for her son. And I'm like, I like how you're buying houses for anybody. I, I need one too, you know? <laughs> and so we're staying friends, but she has this bead store business in downtown Morrisville called Ain't Miss Bead Haven. And I'm I know the love exact it. one. Right. Yep. And I said, I had created a Facebook page called 365 things to do around Lake Norman. And so I said, Hey, I'll promote your stuff. Just tell me whenever anything's happening. So I started promoting it. 
Well, then as time goes by, the sister wants to move. I sell the sister's house and I'm staying connected with, I got a guy cards and I'm checking in on her for the different things that are happening at her store that I'm promoting. And on that 365 things to do around like Norman, I am not promoting Kathy Burns as a realtor. That is, I'm not, I'm invisible there. This is strictly to build a database. And so anyway, a couple months back, her son calls me up and says, hey, mom wants to buy a new house. I go, great. So I meet her out at the house, come to find out she's splitting up and um, she wants to buy this house. And it was a beater. And I'm like, oh, I don't know that you're going to want this house. It was really a long far down. But anyway, I said, <laughs> what are you doing with the other house, girl? She goes, well, I'm going to sell it. I go, I'm your girl. I am your girl for that one. She goes, can you handle that price point? I said, I sure can. I said, I did a 2.8 million. I did this at nowhere near her price point at that point. I said, but our team, we are a mega team. We handle all kinds of high-end properties. And I said, and my marketing is going to be second to none for you, girl. And so anyway, I pitched it in the driveway. I end up getting uh, the listing with her because she trusted me with these other sales. And so then we uh, get it... Um, it's taking forever because it's a split. They're not two happy people together. So that was the challenge of dealing with someone who did not want to sell his house and someone who really wanted to sell the house. It's paid for and they're, they're going to get a lot of cash in their pockets. But anyway, I worked on this. Uh, I had to sell another condo for them so that we could get some cash to kind of get the house up to steam. And so I did. Uh, get that done pretty quickly. We Now we got cash. Now we're doing it. He's still stalling a little bit and I'm moving them along. And finally, they let me put it on the market and I went wild with my marketing on that. I figured this is such a unique piece of property. I'm going to need help because it was very taste specific. Very, you know, it's um, like a French Mediterranean castle on Lake Norman and I'm selling it for $5.22 million. Who's buying it? Well, I'm figuring they're up north somewhere, right? And I'm figuring they're Italian because it was a darker feel. A lot of Italians love that that feel. And I'm like, that's my people. Those are my people. So I put it out there on everything EXP. And I said, share this as if it's your own. I don't want the other side. I'm not looking to do a dual agency here. I just want the sell. So I said, get it out there, figure out who you know in every state that you could promote this to. And we were under contract in 11 days. And the guy came oh from Ohio <laughs> and gave us what we wanted. So it was amazing. Wow. And so we are closing next week, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. And so I was so blown away that we could do this. And I, I met the buyer and I said, how did you find me? And he said, it was a hashtag. I typed in Mansion Lake Norman Waterfront. I said, well, I never used that one. And I'm like, so one of my peeps, one of my peeps put that out there and he finds it. And that's, that was pretty exciting. 11 wow. days blew the, the clients away. They're in love with me and got what they wanted. We negotiated our repairs already and we are rocking and rolling and closing and I met their, I exceeded their expectations. And the woman said to me, I'm so glad you were my agent because no one else could have handled my partner like you did. And, uh, cause he was tough, but the good thing was he's happy. Now he's happy. She's happy. I'm happy. They better be. They yeah. Should be. Hell yeah. They better be $5 million <laughs> listing in 11 days. And I, mean, I hope people are, I hope the people buyer's are like connecting agent. the dots listening to this. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. The buyer's agent was licensed in North Carolina. But he was licensed in 13 states and he lives in Florida. He drove seven hours up to meet the buyer who drove down from Ohio. And I said, buddy, also, I was worried he was a scammer because it was so quick on. I said, are you scamming me, you rascal? Which I found out about a, um, a software tool where you can do background checks. Um, I forget the name of it, but I'll, I'll tell you later. Um, anyway, so I said, are you a scammer? He goes, no. I'm not crazy woman. So he gives me his information. I look him up. Oh, he's got $900 million listings all over the country that he's involved with. He said, all right, I'm going to believe you. I'll let your guy come. Cause they, they gave us a, a full price offer before he even saw it ready what? to go. I said, you better get him in here. I need to know he's for real. And so they did. And it was great. But that agent, the only real thing that he's done for that commission was drive up that one day and drive back. I met for all the inspections and I met for uh, 
all the he gave his client my number i just deal with his client <laughs> i said you rascal if there's any problems where we have to come up with money in this or in this deal i'm coming to you you're paying it yeah you are paying it because yeah. not me buddy <laughs> he's cool so if we if we average the hourly rate per agent it's like this <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's amazing that's amazing Sam, no i i hope everybody's listening like they're connecting the dots and and honestly i'll probably go back and listen to this episode like four different times because there are so many things that like you've said but you it's not just glossed over said, right like like just there's so many things that i'm like listening and i'm like holy shit like, you know, just the, the different things that you've described and explained and you're just like, yeah, all right, I did it. <laughs> I mean, like to get a $5 million listing 12 years later off a $30 Groupon and how many other, how many other, you know, transactions did you help her and her family with in the, in the interim, another handful in the last 12 years? Like you, you can't, you can't teach that. That's not a, that's not a tangible thing. And it's also not luck. No, like it's, not luck. it's also not luck. So there are so many things that people could just sit on the sidelines and be like, well, you know, I'm not making the sales because of whatever, but there's so many things already in this episode that you can tangibly put to work. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it takes a little bit of connecting the dots. So if you're listening out there, go back and listen to this episode a few more times and make sure you're taking notes and connecting some of those dots with <laughs> what Kathy's saying and what she's not saying here. You are, you're a genius. I'm going to go back and listen a million times too. I mean, even <laughs> that make it your own page that, you, that you've had a hand in starting, if not started by yourself, uh, to mark it out to other people in other states because you knew the kind of buyer that was going to be coming likely to this listing. I mean, that's, genius. That's I do genius. think yeah. that's very important when you have a listing, you know, if you've got a cookie cutter house, that's one thing, but there's a lot of houses that are unique and me, because I focus on the water, I've got a unique buyer. I have to be thinking, who's my buyer? Where's my target market? And, and niche in, you know, because th that that's powerful. Who's the agent that's going to bring me the buyer? You know, who's hungry? You know, you got to be, you got to have grit in this business. You have to think outside the box. You have to create your own boxes all the time. Yes. Yes. And I want to highlight what you said, because this is something you glossed over, but, but this is something like very, very powerful that I don't think people will ever understand outside of EXP. And like, for those of you listening, this is not an EXP commercial. We're just nope. all with EXP. So, so I want to highlight this though. With any of your previous brokerages, what you described as far as posting out this listing, this $5 million listing, posting it out to other agents across the country and things like that would not have been possible. Not like possible, you literally ever. would have had to pick up the phone or, or find an email address for other agents at every single office. Like you, you came from Keller Williams most recently. And even in Denver, I'll use this example the Keller Williams Cherry Creek office and the Keller Williams downtown office and the Keller Williams Arvada office. And all of those, they're all different. They don't talk to each other. And the but franchises. you have the, yes, you have the unique opportunity with EXP to make a few posts and be all connected in one singular website with every EXP agent across the world. And yep. that like, like, that tool is not something that should be taken lightly. And now you can go to other $5 million listings and say, listen, this is what I did. Not only are we a mega team in the Charlotte area and, and the surrounding states, like this is the tool that I have at my disposal. And so what's the ROI on that? Oh, gosh. Right? Like $5 million times your commission, you do the math that are listening. So right. that's something, again, that you just glossed over, but people truly need to understand like what was also in the background that that truly that rocked my world that it happened i mean i hoped that it would happen um but i never had that opportunity with any company to do that like you said so but right. to be able to do that here and and so many agents had it like i have a coach that i'm working with and he said i coach a lot of people from a lot of different companies and he said but i saw your your house on a lot of EXP pages because he connects with all these different agents, right? So he's following them on Facebook. And he said, I saw your house with a lot of agents because it was so easy for them to just, if they had somebody in their territory or they attracted somebody, 
to be able to get a referral for a local agent and still get a referral on it. You know, a 25% me on anything over a million, I'm asking for 30% referral. So if, if they're doing a 30% referral on a $5 million property, even if it was a smaller commission that was being offered, ours was two and a quarter, even that, that's a mega number right there which is another mission that I have this year. My goals incorporate outgoing referrals. I want 30% of my business in outgoing referrals because that's easy money. And I focus on, I teach people that I, is in my sphere that I can, I can vet an agent for you anywhere in the country and possibly nationwide or internationally, depending on the country. You come to me, I'll vet them. And then you can decide if your people want to work with them because I want those outgoing referrals more than I want the incoming. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. You're, you're so clear on what your goals are and what your mission is. And it's, it's beautiful to see. Um, it, it, what is your, besides that, give me one other big project or goal that you're kind of working towards or you're looking forward to in the next year or two. For me, it's get out of production and teach and get that residual going. That is my my number one focus. I, you can't help but I can't help but work because the business just comes to me, which is because of all the things that I've laid in place. And but what I can do is mentor like someone that I have brought over, mentor someone with that client, so that they can they'll know me. I'll be involved in that. I'll mentor that agent that I've sponsored over to EXP and mentor them forward so that they can grow. I can teach, which I like to do, and I don't have to do the business of it. And I can build my residual, which is where my focus is, because I really, I, uh, I want to, I want to do a lot of stuff. I got a lot to do. <laughs> so that's my vision. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Drive oh my car. <laughs> That's great. Like your car. Yeah. You did just get a new car. <laughs> We're going to have to have you back on again because you just dropped so much gold in this, <laughs> what seemed like five minutes, although it's been 46. Um, wow. So we're definitely going to have to have you back on for round two. Um, but yes. before we do that, we do have a little lightning round that we did not prep you at all for. It's just going to be a few random questions, fun questions. Whatever comes to your mind first, we're going to cycle through and uh, okay. just have some fun. Okay. You ready? <laughs> yeah. Okay. If someone gave you $1 million to spend on real estate, how would you spend it? Or within the real estate world? It doesn't have to be on real estate. For me? Mm-hmm. Oh, I know exactly what I do. Be a little Tell waterfront us. cottage. Little waterfront cottage. It's right on my vision board right there. I see the house. I got big water views. And it's going to be have to be near my kids. There we go. Yeah. Just a down payment, probably. <laughs> just be a yes. down payment. <laughs> I don't need a big house. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. I just like a little cottage. I'm a little cottage, little people person. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy, you've talked a lot about apps and technology. So if you had to name the five apps that you cannot live without, what would they be? Mm, I love Reach. Reach is one okay. of my favorites because that's how I stay connected with either clients because you can sort mm -hmm. it into groups and I can do a group post uh, that goes individually. And that's a big one for me. I really love that. Um and Reach is a mass texting platform for those of you yes. who are not aware. Spotify, of course. <laughs> Big one. <laughs> Got to have um, that. Uh, my, my send out card app, because I can do a card in a nanosecond on that app. It's a big deal for me. Um, TikTok. I do love TikTok. I am a <laughs> maniac for TikTok. You know, <laughs> I haven't done as much as I'd like to do as far as doing videos. Um, but I love the content that's in there. There's so much great content and you can search by so many categories. I got so many friggin' folders that I got to figure out how to go into the folders, which I haven't figured out. I'm just so busy putting them into the folders. <laughs> I do love that. And, um, I, uh, I'm a Trump fan, so I follow Trump. <laughs> Is that five? I hope. All right. That's sure. five. That's sure. <laughs> All right. When you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? Oh boy. I had no idea. Um, I just knew I liked cars and, uh, I didn't want to work for anybody. I don't do well being told what to do. Not at I all. I say that all of the time. Yeah. <laughs> I 
just, uh, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I was given a free ride uh, to college. I said, when I was there a month, I said, you better let me out or I'm just going to have to flunk out because I'm not staying. <laughs> so I did not go to college. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Kathy, we talked a lot about your, um, your plans and, and some things, you know, you, you want to get, get out of the production side or slow that down and, and get more into the teaching coaching. So if you could retire tomorrow, um, and, and all things, you know, financially are set, what would you do? How would you spend your time? Hmm. Uh, I would travel. I would definitely still mentor. I, ca I can't not work. Working is in my DNA. Um, I would just design it more. I'd probably like to be more of a coach, but not on a, a structured basis because I don't like a lot of structure. So I, I'd like it. I like it when agents just call me up and say, Kath, I have trouble with this. I go, okay, let's just figure it out. You know, um, I like the freedom to do that. I like the freedom to travel. Um, I like to drive fast cars and I probably go to more car shows than I already do, which is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably it. It sounds like fulfilling life to me. Okay. My last question for you. Uh, I know that you love to learn. So yes. what is your all time favorite book? Mm. Let, let's keep it within like the business. I mean, fiction's great, but let's keep it like, oh. what's your all time favorite book? I'm not a fiction. I, I'm a maniac for audible books. That's fine. I, that works too. My favorite is the power of consistency. I think that's the most important book. And the guy who wrote it is so amazing. His friggin' story starting in jail as a felon and becomes a millionaire and a teacher. And uh, the power of consistency is incredible. Because well, you've got to be consistent. It's obviously been reflected in your business through all of the stories you've told us. I mean, you are very consistent. And I think that that's largely lent to your success in your career Excellent. thus far. I'm affectionately known as a junkyard dog. I am on it. You give me a mission and I'm on it. I'm going to yep. not stop until it's done. <laughs> awesome. Kathy, the junkyard dog. Oh, I love it. <laughs> All right, Kathy, our final question for you is if you lost everything except the knowledge that you have, what would you do in your first 30 days to get a deal? I'd go right to Remind in the MLS and I would figure out those ones that are most likely to sell or um, medium likely. I would dive into them and I would just be on it all over it of how I'd be reaching out to them um, continuously. I'd get their phone numbers. I'd figure it out. Um, I They would get something from me that would be changing that content and I'd be probably sending uh, values on their property as my main introduction. I, I might send... I, I try and figure out how to get in front of them and by getting their phone number uh, and I'd spend the money that I, I'd have to figure out how to spend the money, but I've been such a, um, uh, scrapper to figure that out. If I had to sell something, I'm selling something to get the money that I need to make it happen. I'm not going to complain about, I don't have the money. I'm going to figure it out. And for me, it's, I'm always going to figure it out. And, but that would be, that would be my go-to spot initially because I know that there's gold there. There's gold. Perfect. I love it. Perfect. I love it. Thanks. Perfect. It's been fun. Kathy, this has been awesome. Yes, this has been awesome. And thank you guys all for joining us today. If you like this week's dose of the RE Junkies podcast, please subscribe and leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform. If you have a crazy real estate story or a great case study, click the submission link in the show notes to be featured in a future episode. And submissions can be anonymous if you want. We'll catch you junkies next time on the only real estate podcast of its kind.